Okay, so that means uh, if we're going to have some diatomic with nitrogen or lower, I'm going to have the following setup. So you draw your energy, that's always there. Now since the, the atom is still a mystery because we're doing this magically, we'll just call it atom A. It's going to form the diatomic A2. Okay. And then uh, I'm just going to put in, there's going to be a 1s orbital. I don't know where the electrons are going to be yet, but I don't care. I'm just going to draw the picture first. 2p. So a 1s, there's going to be 2s orbital, 2p orbitals. And on the other side, same thing. There's the 2p, 2s, and the 1s. Okay, now I'm going to draw in all, so what I've drawn is the atomic orbitals so far, now I'm going to draw in the molecular orbitals. So, for the 1s, there's a bonding, the lower energy, and an anti-bonding. So you got sigma 1s and sigma 1s star. Do you want me to draw in the shapes of the orbitals too? Uh. It's up to you. Okay, so if you draw in the shapes, Bonding is when you bring two 1s orbitals together. Remember the s orbitals are spherical. So you bring two together, they're the same phase. I'm just picking to do them both unshaded. They could be both shaded, as long as they're the same. And then up here, one's going to be shaded and one's unshaded. That represents anti-bonding. And this anti-bonding, which is destructive interference. Bonding down here, which is constructive interference both the same shape. Okay. Again, I don't know the atom yet. It's still hidden in your mind. Okay. So then, I'm going to do 2s. You're going to notice it's going to look exactly the same. I draw the bonding, the antibonding. I have a sigma now 2s and a sigma 2s star. I have still orbitals that are spherical. They're going to be bigger than 1s, but I'm not that great an artist to make them all bigger. So I'm just going to draw them spherical. There's the constructive on the bottom, destructive on the top. Remember, constructive is always lower energy than the destructive, or bonding is always lower energy than antibond. Okay? Okay, that's s. The p's have their own sort of shape because there's uh, six total p orbitals that are atomic. So we're going to make six um, molecular orbitals. Now since you told me it's less than nitrogen, I need to remember it's two, one, two, one. And that's what you'll need to remember. Like that. I can name them, just like I've been doing before. Whenever there's two, it's a pi bond pi 2p, because they're 2p orbitals, sigma 2p, sigma because there's only one line, pi 2p star, the antibonding, because there's two lines, and it's a star because it's above the midline, this midline right here, and then sigma 2p star, it's like the counterparts, they're the opposites, the bonding, antibonding bonding, the antibonding. Is that okay? Just like we have bonding, antibonding, bonding, antibonding. If you want to draw in the orbitals, remember the p orbitals, there's three. There's the one that goes up and down, the one that goes forward and backwards, and the one that goes right and left. There are all three directions in the Cartesian coordinate system. So, if I bring two of these together, they look exactly the same. What kind of bond would that be, sigma or pi? pi? So, it'll be pi. It'll look like this. Pi, because the bond is not in the center. So I made this little uh, summary thing. If you have two atoms like that, if the bond is between the atoms, that's a sigma bond. And if you have two atoms like this, just like before, but the bond is up here and down here, it's called a pi bond. Okay? 
So we did this one. If we got two of these right next to each other, that's also going to be a pi bond. That's why there's two lines here, because these are equal energy levels. Those are equal energy levels. The only difference is they're rotated in space. But otherwise, they're equal energy levels. That's why there's two lines. So uh, for, if we bring two of these together in the correct phase, we'll get something look like this. Is that a pi or a sigma bond? Yeah, so both the bond is between the middle, so sigma. That's why I called it sigma 2p. And there's only one, that's why there's only one left. And the pi is just the opposite of this, pi star, and the sigma star is opposite of this, so I'll do that. Opposite of the pi would be this one, and the one that goes kind of forward, backwards, like that. Okay, so I do opposites, the antibondings. And then the opposite of the, the sigma is just when two opposite phases bond. So all these molecular orbitals that I drew here, you don't have to uh, be able to recreate those. Okay? Those are just to see the concepts of why are there two lines here, and why is it called pi? Well, it's a pi bond. And the pi's you're going to see in the next lecture, too. You're going to see the sigma bonds again. And why is it sigma? Oh, because they're sigma bond. And why is there one line? Because there's only one orbital. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you said that you couldn't draw the pi bonds because they look kind of weird. Um, like, uh, and you also said the book had a better example, right? The book, you can draw the pi's. Uh, for example, kind of on scratch here. This would form a pi bond, and if you draw it, it's uh, sort of, if here's the center of each, it would just be a blob above and a blob below, like that. It's just the book is better at drawing it. Especially the anti-bonding one is pretty tough to draw, I think. So if you want to see a really nice artistic drawing, look in your text. It's, it, it just looks, it makes sense, <laughs> opposed to the blobs. So that's why I don't need to draw those blobs, because we'll have no idea what the heck you're doing. So we just want you to draw it like I have here before adding them together. We'll get the idea by that. Okay, so I've drawn my whole template. Now, to be revealed, the atom. So what was the atom you had in mind? 